You're listening to the Totally Indian Football Show by Humans of Indian Football. Well, it's a new month, a new episode of the Totally Indian Football Show. That's episode number four for you. I'm your host, Siju. Welcome to all the listeners and let's welcome our uh, expert panelists. We unfortunately again don't have Saik joining us. He's still busy with his exams. We wish him well for that. But let me start uh, introducing our expert panelists that we have. We have Ajay Menon joining us back. He's back again on the show. Hello, Ajay. Hey, Siju. Good to be back. Good to have you. Welcome to the show, Arko. Hi, Siju. It's great to be back. Great, great. Good stuff. And finally, we have Sandeep Menon from Bengaluru. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Doing well, doing well. I'm going to first come to, uh, before before we start, I said, uh, the, we are rec- we've recorded this episode on a Wednesday. Let me start with Ajay first. So, without wasting much time, the game that we saw, Mumbai City and East Bengal, though we thought we would have a great contest at hand uh, from both the sides, uh, seeing, wanting to see Sergio Lobera take over Robbie Fowler, but it looked like—I mean, the scoreline says that it looked like a one-sided game, a three-nil victory for Mumbai City. What do you have to say about it, Ajay? Well, um, I, I don't think so. You know, the, the scoreline reflects the actual state of the game. I think East Bengal had their moments in the game, but uh, in terms of uh, Mumbai City FC, we finally get to see a glimpse of what Lobera ball is all about. Um, he started with Adam Lafondre up top, a single striker. Uh, remember, Adam was playing uh, on the right uh, in the initial games. So, uh, that meant that Ogbeche uh, was on the bench. And we finally got to see the Jahu and Bumu show, especially the latter. Hugo Bumu was absolutely brilliant. Uh, he had a hand in all three goals. He won the first uh, uh, penalty. Uh, he had the assist first and then he uh, won the penalty. And uh, yeah, eventually, I think uh, Mumbai uh, would just just slightly better than uh, East Bengal in the second half and that made all the difference. Towards the end, I think, you know, uh, you know they were also the fitter side. So, uh, any chances of uh, East Bengal coming back looked grim. I mean, even despite Robbie Fowler bringing on uh, JJ eventually towards the end, they never really looked like they were going to, you know, threaten in Mumbai in the second half. First half, maybe, yeah, but in the second half, as the game went on, uh, you know, we really saw Mumbai uh, taking up shape and... Um, you can finally say that uh, Lobera era is uh, well and truly begun. I'm going to come next to uh, Arko on this. Arko, do you want to add something to that for uh, Robbie Fowler? I mean, or are we on the st- are we on the same page that uh, when we started, we said uh, it's just the start, too early to judge the team. But especially with the comments that Robbie Fowler has made, which has made to the headlines of even on Twitter and everywhere else, uh, how do you see them shaping up from here? Firstly, I'm surprised that. Uh... You know, Ajay didn't use the words lob era. I think everyone's pretty much using that. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, secondly, I think, <clears throat> you know, we expected this from East Bengal. They've had the least amount of time. And uh, it clearly shows. The the captain suffered, a, you know, uh, unfortunate muscle injury. And that really put them off their game from the, from the get-go. And uh, all three goals, you know, uh, came from individual mistakes, right? So, the team's not there, they're still getting there, but uh, these aren't good signs, you have to say, for, for, for East Bengal. They haven't really, you know, they haven't really breached the net in the first two games. They haven't, uh, they've shown glimpses of their ability here and there, but uh, you can see that they'll take at least a couple of more weeks, you know, to to get there. But unfortunately, at the start of the season, the games just come thick and fast. You know, they're, they're just coming every once every three, four days. So, I don't think, you know, they have they really have the time, you know, that they really want to, to gel. So, uh, and yeah, Robbie Fowler's comments, you know, saying, you know, some of these Indians have never been coached before. Uh, obviously, it came out of a place of, you know, just frustration on the night. Yeah, I get that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of coaches, they come here, they don't, uh, they're not necessarily talking about the technical side of it. Most coaches, when they come here, they, they, they're talking about the tactical side of it, right? Uh, just, just give you an example, you know, I'm not taking any names, but in Goa, uh, when, when Lo, once Lobera was holding a session where he said, you know, these are, uh, these are the roles of, uh, folks in a five man system. When we play a five man, uh, you know, backline. And uh, one of the, you know, players after 20-30 minutes of the session, he came out and said, Wo kya bola bhai? Did he say 3? Did he say 4? Did he say 5? 
I don't understand what he said. So essentially what Fowler is referring to and what a lot what a lot of other guys also refer to is that the fact that the tactical side of it has not has not been drilled into these guys from a very young age. Right? And that shows. That shows when the system change that they struggle to adapt. Right? Uh, especially the the younger lot, especially the lot, you know, without the you know uh, really good football education. So yeah, I mean, uh, all things said and considered, I feel you know Robbie Fowler might have a point or two there. But yeah, again, I think uh, it was more of the frustration you know at seeing his uh, team commit individual errors that came through. Yeah, I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna remain with you, Arko. Uh, let's talk about the Gerard News show that we saw, but uh, more so about the game. Uh, let's not spend more time or waste more time talking about what happened on the sidelines. But it was a one-all draw, Goa versus Northeast United, and uh, I mean Northeast has once again shown to be the party poopers, and you know, uh, rightfully so that they are gelling, and we will be looking at it uh, at the club in detail. Uh, you know very soon on this episode itself but talking about the game uh what 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 were your thoughts well at the start of the season i was very sad that you know ilko won't be a part of you know any uh, team this year but uh, gerard nuse's post match interviews have you know quickly made me you know uh, forget that i mean i'm really happy now that that you know nuse gives this uh, really amazing post match interviews where he's just He's just taking shots left, right, center, and it's it's very entertaining to watch because here the young coach, you know, who's who's building a siege mentality around his team, who's saying, you know, come, you know, come at us, you know, let let let's see what you guys got because we'll give it back, you know, we we won't take any prisoners, right? That that's his mentality, and it shows through his football also. Uh, he's supremely pragmatic. He knows. you know he knows when when to go for the jug- jugular you know he knows when to cl- you know uh, close the you know close the hatchets he he did that against goa really well he frustrated them you know the entire game i think uh, goa had more than double the position that northeast had almost had 70% position but still had nothing to show for it and uh, that primarily goes down to the fact that you know the team is supremely organized it's one of the you know best organized sides in the isl this year northeast everyone's going to make you know find it tough and uh, what he's done is that you know with idris idrisa silla and uh, kwesi apaya he has two guys who can change it up you know he can bring one in place of the other so he has that weapon you know in his locker saying if the t- you know the match not going our way you know we can introduce these two guys you know you know to make a difference at the back you have dylan fox who's who's been an absolute revelation like i think uh, he's been the man of the match in two of his three games at least uh, so yeah i mean this game we saw him starting with silla instead of apaya uh, you you kind of saw what the game plan was because apaya is different to silla apaya is the one who likes to drop deep and work hard and harry the defenders whereas silla is your old fashioned number 9 as i've said before he likes to be in the box you just put the ball on his head and you know he's likely to you know fight against the defenders and try and win the ball which is what led to the penalty this time uh yeah regarding the incident obviously uh, you know there's been a lot of misinterpretation and you know whatever happened but yeah there was quite a bit of <laughs> sideline drama but i think both the teams right fc goa and northeast united they have a way they want to play which is very encouraging because a lot of uh, indian teams still you know struggle to find their identity well into season 7 uh but yeah like i mean fc goa you can see that the team is gelling the team has made progress you know under lobera they were at attacking power 100 uh now they are attacking power let's say 40 or 50 but the defense has come you know leaps and bounds they are they are more of a very balanced team right now but what is happening is that uh, you know the team has has not had the best of luck they've had a red card in one game uh you know they had la- defensive lapses in the first game since then they have not had any major lapses so you can see that you know by game week let's say 6 or 7 this fc goa team should should you know show its real colors the problem you know what's happening right now is that all teams choose to you know sit back against them and sit in defend in banks two banks of four especially basically defend you know with eight men behind the ball 
in that case your only two options are to basically go white or to you know have a guy stationed between the two banks of four last year that boom who could do that they trying that with nogera what's happening is with nogera and bedia the two players are sometimes very similar right uh, nogera also maybe is taking his time to find his feet is obviously been really good throughout the games but uh, i think juan expects a lot more of him so is really interesting to see uh, the two full backs haven't delivered they haven't been the best you know their end product hasn't really been great that is another thing that, that's affecting them but yeah you saw you saw what happened when angulo gets a chance he got a chance he put it away brandon created a chance so you see that you know one is getting closer and closer to finding his you know proper combination well that was a detailed dissection there from both the teams that one who's yet yet to get those three points and uh, the other team that has been the spoiler uh, has been spoiling a lot of other teams plans so rightfully so and probably as our convention going ahead we should see both uh, both the teams uh, flourish and you know probably probably just uh, surprises even further so coming to you uh, over to you uh, sandeep that during the weekend games now <laughs> we saw all the weekend matches end up in a draw uh, which also included the bengaluru fc hyderabad there was a stalemate a nil nil draw a uh, very dead game jamshedpur odisha actually lived up to that but uh, sandeep you mentioned of uh, udanta being you know having to step up and uh, you also said that you know probably we may see on the on that game but uh, what do, what do you have to say because it was probably the most disappointing game in bengaluru fc's history of matches well i i wouldn't go that far because i've seen some other duds also before <laughs> in the i league time but uh, yeah i'll this is i'll give you an example of how to boring this game was because i was doing the match report for that game and uh, until 70 minutes i had uh, basically written down aridani header that's the only incident of note that i had written down and you have to write over 400 words and uh, around 70 minutes i started getting a little worried like what am i going to write like normally when you're at the stadium you get to see the fans uh, how they are interacting or sometimes you get to see you definitely get to see how the team is set up properly in terms of formation and things here in on tv it's not the same you don't get to see it that clearly so uh, i didn't want to go in that direction also so eventually i heard the commentator say that this game has room for a hero and then that's what i wrote saying that none of them stepped up on that day so that's how uneventful this game was so just to just give an example of it and to be fair like hyderabad is, did what hyderabad i think uh, is generally doing because they are a team that is finding their feet they didn't want to press bfc or anything they and neither did bfc press them it was like a slow build up very low intensity but that suited hyderabad and because they have aridane they always know that uh, there is that one or two chances a game he will get and he might be able to do something and uh, he did uh, gurpreet made a fantastic save to stop that header but otherwise bfc is defensively strong we know offensively they had absolutely nothing that that was just a pedestrian performance uh, as as bad as i ever seen in them in the isl era there was no uh, absolutely no creativity there was no uh, it is just like when i'm looking at the team also i feel like where is this creativity going to come from because ospet had a, a terrible two games that uh, since he started the ball doesn't stick to him he seems to be if you are supposed to be the target man who is going to hold the ball up with the back to goal bring your team in play he is not doing that again we don't know if that is a strong point from everything i've heard he's got a dynamite left foot and uh, i've not seen him take one shot so far and uh, on the other side clayton silva looks the only promising prospect who can do something but again he is sort of bypass most of the game because you have to get the ball to him quickly if you are transitioning you have to transition fast if you are playing in the counter it just seems like a very disorganized team Carles spoke about how Dimas uh, injury to Dimas Delgado is causing them uh, creativity you know lack of creativity but again i don't see Dimas come and change the game he's not a number 10 he can control the tempo of the game Eric is a good player to have with him but they need someone who can you know dictate play and this is not it's come to the fore now but this is not an issue that they didn't have before like even last year they were largely playing on the counter Uh, Sunil got a lot of penalties, so in that way, they, that's how they managed to score a lot of free kicks. I think over 50%, close to 60% of their goals are from free kicks. 
or throw ins or you know set pieces of that sort so they are really good at that and one thing hyderabad did this they didn't concede any stupid free kicks to close to the penalty box i think they had maybe one or two maximum three free kicks uh, and corners and all combined and these guys are trying to do the long throw ins so once you take away the set pieces from them that's a major chunk of their attacking arsenal gone right there and they just i i personally think they need to first recruitment has to be done properly because the last everybody has this uh, opinion that their recruitment is always great but before mikku who was a striker that stood out for them they had all these years in i league uh, and stuff like that after shawn rooney was okay kim was okay then they had a lot of forgettable ones segovia was there uh, robbie norales was there uh, colonel colonel glen for a brief period they didn't have any great strikers then they got mikku mikku was a huge success since then again it's back to the same like they're not getting I, they've missed out on the major targets they wanted this year so i think uh, so aspet is probably their fourth or fifth choice probably because they had a few other discussions with few other players like coro and stuff like that even lafondre for for that matter i think and uh, they just have to freshen up that team because that team is aging the core of the team is aging and they need to find the next generation or bleed them bleed them in right now so that they can slowly change like suresh was the best player for bfc i thought that day apart from maybe yuvan so they need to do all this and also probably come to terms with the fact that their money it's not the same anymore like suddenly atk is able to buy whatever player they want mumbai has got so much money in so they had a good budget when they came to the isl suddenly other teams are making up for that uh, money as well so they need to be smarter in terms of recruitment and things like that and uh, indian players as well they need to recruit smarter so uh, it's going to be a long season for them at least it looks that way maybe it will change something will click or some young player will come through or whatever may happen it's a lot about momentum as well but uh, we very tough for them a tough season for them yeah tough indeed but we have probably the season to look forward to and like always bengaluru has given up their best and we expect and hopefully we look forward to that uh quickly we're going to move on with uh, the other things that we're going to talk about today uh, so arko can you just give us uh, ifa shield updates whatever that we have uh, just for our listeners it starts from the 6th of december it goes on to the 19th the reason we're just touching upon it very briefly we have uh, four teams from the i league going to be playing and it kind of acts as a pre season for them uh, so the four teams are mohammedan sc the black panthers who are the new entrant to the top division i mean i league uh, indian arrows gokulam kerala fc and the new other new team that uh, that we'll be seeing very soon is sudeva delhi fc Uh, so it'll be played in Kolkata. Uh, the tweets that I've seen of this journalist called Abhishek Ganguly, he's mentioned that they are taking this uh, tournament probably under all, you know, with the guidelines and protocols of the COVID-19. But are there any news, any other updates that we have from Kolkata for the IFA Shield? It's the 123rd edition. Uh, so any anything that we should know of? So, see, Ju, what I've heard is that uh, real Kashmir. is uh, replacing uh, sudeva fc if i'm not uh, wrong i think there was a last minute pull out and uh, i think now it's uh, real kashmir is going to play uh, essentially uh, just looking at the tournament it's a it's a warm up for both uh, cfl clubs and i league uh, teams right uh, cfl clubs really haven't started building uh, what they're going to what you know all uh, teams are testing right now is the bench strength Uh, Gokulam, I think uh, you know they've they've taken some first team players, but uh, um, majorly what they want, what each team wants to test is their you know is their is their reserves, is their strength in reserves. Uh, <clears throat> generally, the Calcutta Football League sides take the IFA Shield more seriously, but from my conversation this time, uh, it seems like you know the start of the CFL uh, you know is a bit unclear. It might start in March or Feb, so. uh what they're doing right now is uh you know they they're just fielding players to see you know to see whether they can take the you know can take what is the rigors of the cfl right so uh yeah i i do not think the ifa shield is uh what do you say is is that much of, of a grand affair this time as it as it usually is and that's primarily due to circumstances um i league teams also have been you know have been keeping a few guys on trials uh, who they are unsure of right they've been training with the teams 
but uh, they're not sure you know of where they want to retain these guys for the i league this is their way of um, seeing you know seeing whether they they really fit into their plans or not um, what i've also heard is that uh, some i league teams are also trying to uh, you know cash in on this time and uh, set up some other pre season friendlies with the other cfl teams because considering that these are only groups of 3 so every team plays like two matches right unless and until they qualify to the next round so yeah that that's pretty much it i feel uh, the if shield is uh, you know if shield was interesting a few years back because um, it eventually turned into a youth competition you saw the likes of pune city under 19s winning the winning the if shield and all so i think this year if shield has gone back to being a senior uh, senior competition so uh yeah i mean uh, it's interesting to see what happens but uh, we may not get a broadcast of it kolkata tv apparently might uh, show it but uh, i don't know if um, that's available or on all dish networks the uh, you know i think they were in talks with adda times i'm not sure as to you know if, if that went through but if adda times broadcast it then i think we can all watch it like we did with the durand cup last time well thank you up uh, arko for the updates of my uh, 123rd ifa shield probably uh, we can see we, these four teams will definitely have something to look forward to uh, from the i league and also the cfl clubs to have their pre season played uh, i mean unfortunately circumstances are such but uh, i'm sure they will give their best on the field and let's hope that we can watch some of the games at least now let's move on to the exciting topic that today we are going to touch upon in detail is the topic of the club North East United FC. Uh, we've seen them. We've always wanted them to perform well. I mean, they've started off saying that okay, we, they stand for the eight or seven states that's there in North East, and all of that. But today we'll be talking about how we'll just go back, uh, probably rewind a little, and see how they performed. If to if if we go by that, probably we won't be we won't have uh, you know if if the league had a promotion relegation. we wouldn't see north east united probably in the second season of isl because they started off at the bottom of the table in the first season and uh, thanks to no relegation they were still there uh, we still thought okay they'll probably get better with time they had different of coaches and they've had a lot of every season they've had a new coach uh, and not the only team for for doing that but they've really not given us that mark you know and twice they did come close to uh finish off in the playoffs you know we thought probably uh, under vingada who was you know called as the professor we thought probably that's a new era but it was really bad and uh, even worse went down the 17 18 season and uh, we thought probably elko would take it ahead uh but even that wasn't great and uh, re- remembering elko and you know how good he is with his words or tweets rather he's he he mentioned that you cannot make uh you cannot make from a mini cooper a ferrari so so well that's what he said back then uh and today we are talking about a club that has probably taken us by surprise from the first match that they've played they've got one the youngest uh coach in the i league you know seven years that i league has been played uh, gerard noose and they he's got promising foreigners uh, the indian core also look good arko i'll start with you because you're the most excited about this team and yes you called it uh, even before and i was listening to so the some points that i may pick up uh, is probably also my own but the other thing what helped me was the podcast the drag flick where arko and vikram were there and uh, similar points of discussion even there as well but arko let's start with you uh, what do you think why do you think it hasn't clicked for north east united so far and how different is this season going to be maybe we'll take the first question first the first yeah. la- part of the I question think, uh, yeah so i mean uh, i don't think it's a really secret that uh, north east have the lowest budget in the in the league uh, the budget's always been an issue uh, they've they they've not really had the budget to compete not in a single season right so whoever has has come in has to you know make do with uh, you know whatever he's got Ilko obviously got the farthest, got them into the playoffs, and they were twenty minutes away from reaching the final. I think against BFC it was. Um, I think both me and Sandeep were at that game. So, looking at uh, Northeast United throughout the years, uh, 
one thing that stood out and you know one thing that i mentioned in the drag flick as well is that uh, the really the lack of a you know a scouting network i think vikram did mention that when he was there when he was the head of scouting there he did um, set up a few processes in place uh, but again uh, what's what happened is that you know uh, their budget fluctuates so much that you know one year they run a scouting program the next year they they're not able to right uh, but yeah i mean a lot of people come to me and say uh, bro but uh, you know northeast united has the best scouting advantage of any any guys in the isl while that's true you know uh, nobody's really giving uh, northeast a free pass at these players because today you know uh, an fc goa an east bengal and a kerala blasters everybody's picking up from the region right it's not just northeast is to to pick up so yeah i mean if northeast maybe you know you no know, went down that path maybe uh, let's say invested a, a, a few you know a, a few a little portion of his budget in you know in in looking at um, up and coming talents then then they may not miss out on these guys or they may get get there ahead of all of these clubs because today i i looked at elite league games also you know you go to any part of the country mumbai bangalore all of these teams they are likely to have a couple of northeasterners in 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 their team right so that really shows you the power of the you know northeast ecosystem you know how how many players are you know produced from those states but uh, you know northeast again you look at the indian contingent this year right uh, what has happened is that uh, you know with northeast budgetary concerns and it happens every year that uh, they try to you know uh, spend the majority of the budget on foreign players they got asam ojian for example last year right uh, <clears throat> because indian players aren't as you know uh, what do you say they their salary you know uh, wages have gone up since the i league right so uh, you you really don't uh, see northeast in the reckoning for any of those stars even this year uh, you look at their you know most high profile indian players that's apuya uh, that's a rampuya then you have uh, you know you have ashutosh mehta so you really don't have those stand out indians that that uh, you know you need to compete in order you know in order to get to the top four this season <clears throat> what gerard has done is that he's probably been the most pragmatic of the coaches along with ilko and then he's probably said you know okay i recognize that you know there is this deficiency in this team probably they don't have the you know uh, best of indians so we need to you know we need to be conservative with our game plan we need to see what works and what doesn't so he's come you know and he's probably you know he's got five points that's probably half the tally that uh, folks expected them to end up with you know at the end of the season so it's he's already you know he's already at a plus you can see that you can see that then you can see you know uh, the the difference at a confidence you know the, the dust to the team when they came back you know uh, to to draw to all i think dylan fox gave a fantastic interview post match where he said you know uh, we have this fighting spirit amongst ourselves you know we know that you know um, there are we facing bigger teams right and uh, yeah i mean you you look at northeast uh, you see a perennial underdog there you see but what noose is doing, doing is he's sticking to a script you know he's he's playing the perfect underdog he's playing that way and he's he's willing to play party pooper he has no qualms about you know the the style of football that he's playing uh, he's he's not i'm guessing he's not much into you know looking at opinions where people are saying oh you know you just shut shop against fc goa like i don't think i don't think he's really uh, flustered by that so it's interesting to see how northeast season pans out but yeah i think the main thing that we have to keep in mind every time is that you know the northeast has the 10th 10th highest budget in the league which is the lowest budget in the league so uh, anything higher and they are always overperforming Right. Sandeep, uh, over to you now. I'll, the point that one we mentioned was, uh, you know, in from taking from the podcast that I heard at Drag Flick, uh, was also something on my mind while I was listening to it. Is that if Guwahati is the base, being the base, I mean, rightfully so, where you have access to everything very easily and all of that. Uh, but can't if if it's an issue of uh, there's other point that is Guwahati does not have any state league as such. I mean, Assam doesn't have a a uh, very strong state league as opposed to the other northeastern states so would you see an option for them sticking in guwahati as their base but probably playing out from some other state 
to get you know more popular base or whatever that would cost them not really because i think they took it because it's easy to commute uh, to go uh, away games and things because the, you hear stories from uh, especially the reason why i always feel i league is harder than isl is simply because the travel there is insane because you have to go to kashmir northeast uh, kerala all these kind of so far away the travel and things and i think one time uh, darren kaldira told me a story and he was playing i think for bagan at that time uh, last season or few seasons ago and he was traveling to uh, go play a match against neroka or one of those teams and he was saying how they had to sit in a sumo because something went wrong uh, and then they all had to pile into different sumos and go up and down the hills and he was like absolutely knackered by the time they got there so for uh, i don't think they'll shift their base from guwahati to play in one of those places and other places but what they can do is like orko said look this is a club that uh, technically embodies the eight states uh, that are in the northeast and the most number of footballers right now come from that side so even if they go there and play pre-season games or play against these local teams uh, in their local home, home grounds like you know i saw you go play a game against i saw you play one against shillong whatever it may be then it's the that club has the potential to become the first stop for all the local players who would prefer maybe to go okay we can go to play isl and we know we can go here because we will get our chances a lot of these players who go uh, to other isl clubs bigger isl clubs with bigger budgets especially those who play as the center backs the number 10s the the midfield center midfield roles are normally taken up by the foreigners so coming here they sort of know okay there is a higher chance that i can play over here and if you if you can make that club as the first destination for players from that area imagine how much they can climb in terms of uh, overperform in terms of this so in terms potentially i think they are very very uh, high value for that it's just like orko said they are they don't have that much money maybe they should look at a different model and it's not like they are being extremely successful the model that they are running now so i don't think it's it's a problem to look at a different model and once the relegation starts it will be if you can get that thing done by the time the relegation is slowly going to start then it makes even more sense like okay now you have a sustainable model which is going to keep giving players because that's how northeast uh, local leagues are they have good players and now and take them and make them their own and it's just I I don't know I just feel like that club has so there are a couple of teams I feel who has great potential in the ISL uh, Kerala Blasters being another uh, mismanaged to the core that team and uh, Northeast is the other one and this year it looks it's a breath of fresh air when they, when you see they are at least changing stuff around because for years they had that uh, one striker Gyan one striker or which uh, Nicolas Velez that guy when he was there so they have put all the eggs in one basket and something happens to them and their whole season is sort of uh, all over the place this year finally you have uh, multiple players who they bought in they have a good core they seem like they seem like a team that's going to be a problem for a lot of them i'm not going to say they're going to win everything but they're going to cause serious problems and this uh, and this is a weird league right this is a long league but compressed to a four months is the longest isl league ever but it's compressed to a four uh, three four four month window and one of the things that i always thought is as the bubble goes longer and longer in you don't know how the players are going to react because we haven't seen a four five month long bubble we've seen in ipl is a two month league two month bubble so getting off to a f- good start might be the best thing you can do because you don't know how the teams are going to react towards the end maybe they won't be as consistent once a, as third month comes around so these guys have got points in games that we didn't expect them to win they won one they drew another one so i think they are in a very good uh, position right now and prag- i like i like pragmatic coaches i like the fact that uh, everyone wants to play oh i am going to pass like spain and all one guy is saying screw that i'm just going to shut shop and hit on the break i really like that uh, mentality so i think they are going to be a uh, noses out of joints that's what they're going to do they're really going to put some noses out of joints and that's entertaining at the end of the day but yeah great potential let's just hope that uh, they figure it out yeah now we've heard both of your talk and dissect in further and in detail ajay uh, what how do you see it because you've also been following the isl since the start 
and we've seen northeast united being that club wanting to do well and we are all looking forward to it because we know it's a core team and most of our players come from that part of the region but something has not clicked and probably like just like ajay uh, just like our coach started with saying budget being the issue uh, but this time around it's different how do you see the difference and how far can uh, northeast united under gerard nose can go in this league I really hope that they, you know, make it to the uh, top half of the table at least. But uh, rather than answering this question, I actually want to put a question to uh, Arco and uh, Sandeep. Uh, given the fact, obviously, you know, with, with the potential, like uh, Arco mentioned, that North East has got the potential, uh, even if you know other clubs have scouts and um, uh, uh, you know uh, agents present over there to to scout the best players. Do you think, uh, given the fact that they knew that they have the financial constraint, they should have, uh, you know, gone for an all Indian core, uh, and you know, because they they were safe from relegation for all these years, at least one year. Do you think they should have gone for an all Indian team, and uh, just told that you know, to the shit, we're we're gonna go all Indian, uh, we're gonna develop an academy, you know, one of the best in India, and probably uh, generate revenue through the sale of uh, you know players who who come through the academy. Do you think that should have happened? So I think uh, the concept of transfer fees is pretty recent in Indian football. It has it didn't really exist. Let's say you know five years back, you saw the odd deal here and there, but it's become more pronounced. Let's say as the years go by, uh, yeah. So I mean, in order to remain competitive, I think that's why they got the foreigners. But yeah, it's not a bad idea because you didn't have relegation, right? At, at, at the at, for so many years, so. It 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 really made sense for them to let's say build on the Indian core and then go from there and then maybe try and make transfer fee because um, Northeast is a very good proving ground for players to let's say go to other ISL clubs. Uh, you saw uh, Bridin Talang, you saw Puitia this year. Uh, you know, go out uh, in in earlier years. You've seen uh, Ogbeche, you know, prove his metal at Northeast United and then move. So yeah, it, it it's an interesting idea. But I think at the end, at the end of the day, they really want to remain competitive as well, which is why they got the you know foreigners. But yeah, I mean, uh, when you know when Sandeep speaks about you know the the positions that are taken up by the foreigners, the strikers and the attacking midfielders, right? That is the one region that produces you know so technically skilled players that they can actually with a bit of you know player education and a, with a bit of you know uh, starting early, they can probably match the foreigners blow for blow. in the technical stakes so yes perhaps if they had started earlier but you have to think about that that it's a is a 10 year process it's a 20 year process it's not going to happen overnight i keep stressing on this because simply because i i i can't get enough of you know folks who want to let's say build players but they they really want to look at a you know 6 month turnaround period or a 3 3 year turnaround period it's not going to happen that easily right you have to you know invest at least 10 years in your local ecosystem even to make your state league better right uh, a lot of isl clubs let's say now that hyderabad is in hyderabad right hyderabad fc so they if they target the telangana league right it's not going to improve overnight but it might improve somewhere later down the line right uh, what you know uh, so just just again delving into the history of northeast football right when you know when uh, footballers from northeast really started getting out of the northeast you know going to uh, you know east bengal and mohun bagan because we've seen these two teams always always scout in the northeast india's first ever captain talimaran now was you know was approached by east, east bengal right at that point in time shillong was the point shillong was the one all of these guys had to get to shillong prove you know prove themselves and then you know when these big teams would come for like friendlies and stuff like that and other tournaments like the you know uh, governors gold cup in sikkim or you know any of these tournaments so they would look at these players and then they would pick them up right uh, what really again uh, you know set the process in motion was a renedi singh going out was a shailo mama making it big right so what we seeing right now is that you know that that has completely changed now everybody heads straight to the northeast you know makes this arduous 12 hour Ten hour journeys, and I I know what you know. Sandeep spoke about because I made those journeys in sumos, you know, eighteen hours cramped there, but it's really worth it to just to see the football there. It's definitely worth it. But yeah, I mean, a lot of teams are doing this right now, so nobody is really going to give North East United a free pass at these players. If they want it, they have to, 
you know really set process and systems in place really have to fight off this other clubs in order to get it. because it's not a secret anymore i think everybody know everybody knows that you have good players especially mizoram and manipur right you have i think this time you have 73 players 43 from manipur 30 from mizoram 73 isl players from these two states alone right that's massive right so yeah i mean like uh, you know like everybody's been speaking about like you you can't you can't really expect northeast united even to get the best of northeastern talents until and unless they start very early right perhaps if they started in season 1 they might have built a system which which did that by season 10 right but they've also had a bit of stop and starts i know uh, from inside information that they are in talks with uh, you know the meghalaya government uh, you know to to try and set try and set up a base academy base in shillong right uh, that's very interesting because uh, again the meghalaya ecosystem has dipped below mizoram and manipur so it, it it could be a mutually beneficial thing for both and uh, yeah i mean uh, the shillong premier league is still a very good state league so if northeast united were to move there it's interesting to see how it would benefit both parties i think it would be a good move right but yeah at the end of the day northeast has to probably bring in those processes you know which enables them to get these kids groom them very early give them the proper education and then get them in right now just getting an indian core in you know uh, probably be demoralizing for 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 everybody if they start losing heavily right and uh, you know you saw what happened to the likes of lajong when they when they fielded a you know uh, all indian team despite that team having some very promising youngsters and some really good players right essentially at the end of the day what happens is that even if technically they match these guys blow for blow right the experience you know the there are certain factors where you know where, where, the, where the foreigners really outshine the, the the indians right and that that is something that has to be inculcated from a very young age right so for so maybe we could see a core of northeastern <clears throat> only northeastern players taking the field for northeast maybe in season 20 or something but right now i i don't think that's it's possible so there is this thing also right from uh, if you look at it in a different way don't setting up an academy if it's going to cost you that much money clubs can there are across europe clubs get into corporate agreement now if you can strike a corporate agreement with few clubs uh, who are let's say not going to compete into coming into I- isl in the next 5 6 years like uh, i i don't want to take any names like all the second division teams that, that play there chingaveng or chanmari and all these kind of teams or even lower rung who are constantly playing in the uh, local leagues because that's a, one of those leagues which is always got a lot of games and the thing orko mentioned one of those intangibles that uh, foreigners have over india is the fact that they are just experienced because they play a lot more games even if you're 22 a 22 year old indian has not played nearly as many games as a 22 year old foreigner so if you can promote these teams ask them to field the team and just ask them for a first option for players when you are going to sell a player sell any player you are free to do so but give me a first option if we need to buy that player just by doing that itself so, you take off the fact that you don't have to pay so much money to build an academy structure you are feeding into the local leagues as well and you are making sure that those those uh, things are run because orko last week last week we were talking about how the mizo premier league is not going to happen this year because there is no money if you can help the local leagues it's a i mean you don't have to be an exclusive uh, exclusionary kind of a tactic here right because let's face it isl has done that a lot so uh, keeping everybody at an arm's length so to speak there the rest of the football uh, contingent so just give them a helping hand maybe that's a different way to go about it i'm not uh, look i'm probably orko can come back and uh, give me the reasons why this is not possible but for me it seems like this seems like a good idea to help the local leagues and just to get the first option not even like say don't sell it to an east bengal or don't sell it to a mohan bagan just ensure that there is local leagues happening just make sure that the players the factory that is producing the most amount of players for the national team for the league continues to produce and you get the pick of the bunch i mean it's a win win for me and i'm not a business guy so uh, it's just common like a common sense kind of a thing it makes sense for me but yeah i mean orko i think wants to say something on this yeah just adding on to two points right when you speak about state leagues uh, whose responsibility really is it to keep the state leagues going right is it 
North East United, is it the state associations, is it the AFS? I think that you know chain of command, that that line of authority first has to be established. You know, it has to be clearly defined who's who's responsible, right? Uh, and yeah, I mean, you guys won't believe the economics of it. Running the Mizoram State, you know, Premier League or the the Manipur State League, it costs the same as an as an you know mid level Indian ISL player salary. Let's say the Indian player salary is twenty lakhs, right? That is roughly the amount you're looking at to run the you know Manipur State League and the or the Mizoram Premier League, right? And uh, yeah, so I'm saying. uh you could be producing a lot more players just by uh you know just by uh, what do you say just by investing you know in a bottom up approach but then again whose responsibility is it i think you think it that has to be clearly defined secondly with respect to game time i think sandeep hit the nail on the head in in northeast right the uh, what really what really sets them apart from the rest of the indians is that uh those guys have a lot of game time under their belts right a guy in mizoram is playing an average of 35 games per season he's playing the i uh, you know the he's playing the uh, uh, mpl he's playing the you know yma shield he's playing the ida cup uh, if he's in isol he's also playing the i league if he's in chingaveng some some years before they played the second division right so they are getting a lot of games you know even if it's a, a neighborhood game even if it's a locality game they are coming and stepping up and they are playing right fifa recommends that uh, you know kids get a minimum of 35 to 40 games you know every season uh, before they turn let's say 21 right so a, a guy who's you know who 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 is in the prime of his career by 22 23 24 would have played played about you know uh, 150 200 minimum senior games right so what is happening is that now uh, a lot of folks are saying you know anirudh thapa is so good because he has a lot of experience you know at that age but even if i was to look at thapa right and he is the most experienced at, at his age by far he has played about 100 isl games right and he is 22 right and he is the benchmark because nobody else has played more games than him at that age then you look at let's say let me take an example of marcus rashford or let's say any of those guys mason mount <clears throat> these guys have played again 200 300 you know 250 senior league games by the time they're 22 23 so what is essentially tipping you know the the scales in, in the favor of you know the northeasterners you know or any of the players coming out from there is the number is the amount of games that they play right and this someone has to ensure that this keeps on happening otherwise we are going to lose you know lose a very what do you say very promising ecosystem to to you know to to market economics really and uh, what has happened is post covid you've seen that you know the spl has been cancelled the mpl has been cancelled because dispensable income that the league used to run on has has completely vanished right you had very low dispensable incomes as it is to start off with in that in that region and uh, a lot of teams you know they used to go to like i've mentioned before they used to go to a local grocer shop to get 5000 rupees for you know for sponsorship right uh, and that's really nothing right because I, i've seen people in mumbai delhi bangalore spend that much on a dinner right but but these are these are the small margins that teams are running on right so whose responsibility is it to to to, to you know to to keep it running uh, youth compensation the introduction is a is a positive aspect you know uh, so what this ha- does is that you know the no longer can anybody take a guy from a northeast club without what do you say compensating them right especially if they fall under the you know leagues that youth competition currently covers the mizoram premier league is is one of those competitions so yeah uh, you know by hook or by crook indian football has to come together to ensure that at least these three state leagues the spl the mizoram premier league and the manipur super league and uh, the the age group competitions under it you know under 13 15 18 especially you know at least hyper locally these four into three 12 competitions should at least happen every year every year without fail and should account for at least 25 to 30 games if you do that uh, if you you know uh, pool in all your resources on that i guarantee you right uh if you put in 1 rupee you will get 5 rupees worth of value that's really the power of 
this ecosystem having seen it up close for 8 months having you know just been on the road there i can tell you that uh, it just waiting to explode like northeast football is just a ticking time bomb that just waiting to explore in indian football and asian football right yeah i think uh, just yes as an indian football romantic i think uh, in the ifl probably northeast united uh, can be one of the first sides to field an all indian level i don't know when that will happen or if it will happen but i think they, they definitely have the potential and over the years they have actually surprised uh, you know a lot of us with uh, you know the change management decisions and the recruitment of atom ajian you know uh, I think the only thing that uh, we haven't seen so far is uh, John Abraham coaching the team from the sidelines. This is age is ripe to become a coach. So, I mean, I would be surprised even if if that happens. But I think from my end, that that is all about uh, you know not even I think. Well, that was that, and that was a great, uh, probably in depth in you know discussion over this club, and that's what we're going to do for most of our shows, right? I mean, like we said, promised you last time that we will look at definitely look at in detail about a player, coach, clubs going ahead, and this was the first of it. So I'm sure you are hooked on to it, and thank you so much, Sandeep Arko and Ajay, for those all those inputs. I think it just opened up. the whole discussion and we even uh, went deeper into the northeast not just the club uh, but the whole region and there's so much that we can expect from this region uh, and that's uh, yes ajay i was mentally in that tata sumo taking that trip into the mountains <laughs> Yeah, it's absolutely like just like Arko mentioned. Yes, it's a it's a travel, but it's absolutely worth it once you reach there. You know, because the whole the whole buzz. It's not just about the match. Even I've witnessed Mizoram. Uh, I mean, I saw play, and it's 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 it, whatever you do to get there, it's absolutely worth it. So uh, definitely on that point, I think on this point we will uh, close this topic here uh, because if we keep talking, we we'll definitely have more more. Things to keep discussing about, but uh, moving on with our discussion, we have uh, this episode. You are listening uh, to it on Friday, so we have a couple of matches over the weekend that we'll quickly run through because we are short of time. We won't talk about it in detail, but Sandeep, uh, Bengaluru are facing two matches, and uh, it's not going to be easy for them as the performance to go by the performance that they have right now. Uh, they have first up is Chennai NFC and. then they play north east united so quickly if you had to run through it uh, what are your thoughts on bangalore fc taking on chennai and then north east i mean this is one of the few times i feel uh, bfc are sort of an underdog considering going into this game it's not something i say very lightly having seen them over the years and having seen how they often step up to face challenges so i do expect them to step up because uh, sunil chetri is not a player who takes uh, you know uh, an underperformance from his team that well Because I've seen him in training, uh, if that ball doesn't is not delivered at the right space uh, consistently, he gets really ticked off, and that's what a leader is supposed to do as well. So in that sense, you I expect them to get a reaction. But Chennai, this is again one of those games, right? This is Goa uh, BFC all over again. Chennai is going to play, BFC is going to st- stop them from playing, and it's like a boxer. One guy is a defensive boxer versus an offensive boxer. We'll see if the counter puncher is better than the other one. and but i'll give uh, advantage to chennai in that one and in the northeast one now that's very interesting because you don't know who's going to take that game by the scruff of the neck because often times it we expect them to do it but who, both of them are defensive pragmatic teams and this is if we saw hyderabad play like that who's supposed to be you know a ball playing team and we sh- shown signs of it uh, unfortunately they had the foreigners injured but against the north east i don't know is this going to be one of those team like who blinks first sort of a thing and uh, again i i can't i can't not pick bfc as a favorite for that for that game simply from whatever they have shown in the history but yeah it's not going to be easy i think after these two games we'll have a proper proper uh, understanding of where bfc stands this going forward this season and uh, yeah i expect them to uh, come back strong at least put in a performance where your fans and the people who uh, like watching your football is uh, like you know confident like goa is not one but we all know that goa is a good team and they're going in the right direction so some something at least show that uh, things are going in the right way i think that's what is most most important for them going this season well goa has not won but we know that they have a good team and with that note i'll ca- i'll ask ajay goa is taking on kerala blasters and uh, i think if i'm not wrong both the teams are looking for their first three points 
uh, what do you have to say? Here is Fernando versus Kibu, and uh, a solid team. FC Goa are a really good team, but we are we are yet to see them uh, shine or outshine as we expect them to. Uh, what do you have to say about this clash? I I hope there's an upset. I hope that uh, you know Kerala Blasters uh, get the three points. But um, you know that's that's just uh, the football romantic in me speaking. I think Goa would uh, probably start off as favourites. Yeah, they haven't won uh, a game in in, in this year's uh, ISL so far. But um, that that win has never looked far away. Kerala, on the other hand, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Albino's uh, save. Uh, you know, got off with a point uh, against Chennai. Probably was the second best team on the pitch the other day. But um, as I mentioned uh, on the earlier pod as well, that uh, uh, Kibu Vikuna should be a long-term coach for this team. I think uh, you know, um, if he stays at least for you know three seasons, he can he can build on something. And we we saw this with his Mohan Bagan team also last year. Uh, you know, he took time to get his tactics right, and eventually, uh, you know, by the end of it, Mohan Bagan were unstoppable in the I League. So uh, trust Kibu and and trust the process and given the fact that uh, you know Kerala have a habit of changing managers quickly, I hope uh, it, it doesn't happen. But uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm I'm actually looking for you know a really attacking game, an open game between both the sides, and uh, I hope that we see a lot of goals in this particular fixture. Now Northeast has a I think it's the other way around. East Bengal has an uphill task against Northeast because uh, going I mean two games it's not good it's not being good for uh, East Bengal and now they have to uh, fight Northeast and then they have and then we have another Bengal team that will play uh, during the weekend which is ATK versus Jamshedpur. Arko what are the quick thoughts on uh, Northeast being the next challenger for East Bengal? I like how you made me the Bengal expert, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just to you know, uh, take a look at both these games. Uh, yeah, again, you know, Robbie follows team. They like to come out and play. They like to you know pass it around to those intricate, you know, uh, what do you say, moves in midfield. So, news as expected is probably going to you know going to sit back. You know, he's going to probably sit tight and um, he's just going to let them play. He's just going to do the same thing that he did against Mumbai and Goa. He's, he's probably going to, you know, try and hit them on the counter punch. And uh, with their captain out, I don't know if he'll make it in time, uh, you know, back for it. But uh, if he doesn't, right, uh, there's a defense that's there for the taking. We saw that uh, that two individual errors also cost them against Mumbai. So... Uh, the signs aren't good. Like I said, they'll take time, East Bengal. So, I'm not sure. I'm not sure as to, you know, how they'll do against Northeast. But uh, expect it to be a very tough game for them. So, uh, with regards to, you know, ATK versus Jamshedpur, you're, you're looking at uh, Jamshedpur team, which again hasn't, uh, you know, won uh, so far. There again, you're seeing a team which is in transition. Uh, you're seeing a team... Which is struggling to create. You know, Walski will pot the ball, but uh, he has to get the service for for that, right? That's the thing with uh, you know Walski, Angulo, Hooper, all of these guys that they, they don't get the service. They're not going to fire, right? They, you don't can't expect them to drop deep like a Koro or an Apaya, you know, and uh, try and fuel the play. And uh, even the systems of the coaches aren't really uh, you know dependent on the strikers doing that. So there's a lot of pressure on Jackie Chan's shoulders to be the you know to be the main man, like Sandeep has mentioned before. Um, Isaac on the other wing has looked good. Um, although you think he, he'd be better off play, probably playing centrally. But uh, yeah, I mean uh, Jamshedpur taking time to gel uh, defensively. Also, they let in two goals against Odisha late. That that'll sting a bit. Obviously, Rainesh got sent off. But yeah, uh, expect ATK to go there again, stifle these guys. Uh, yeah, the one battle that I'm looking forward to seeing is how Tiri, uh, you know, Tiri and Valskis, you know, how how they, they they go up against each other, and that that is probably the battle that decides because you know at the other end that Raw is going to just you know he's going to get you goals. He's got you two and two. Nothing stopping him from making it three and three or even four and three. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. And yes, it was a pretty long one, but uh, that's what you get. I mean, we had some in-depth, detailed uh, discussions over the club and over the games. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have, then please subscribe to our shows. We are available on audio platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. 
podcast among the audio platforms and we are also available you can also check out our podcast on the humans of indian football youtube channel and if you have anything uh, probably to write to us to tell us about what you thought of the show or if you're a northeast united fan listening to this uh, let us know your thoughts you can write to us our twitter handle is official hof and uh, we'll take it probably in the next episode uh, that's all guys thank you so much for tuning in this is episode number 4 of the totally indian football show and i'm your host juju thank you so much have a great weekend enjoy the matches and we'll see you next week